All right, let me ask you about what we're expecting to see. Um, you know, I was here in 2018 when you had a huge mudslide, same place, Montecito, um, that was devastating and deadly. Um, but are these storms different? Do you see these storms in a different way than in the past? Well, Sarah, to give you some context, over the last two and a half weeks, we have had six of these so-called atmospheric rivers coming through our state. Uh, about as much rainfall has fallen on our state in two and a half weeks as would happen in a normal year. Not a drought year, but a normal wet year. The uh, ground is saturated. We are simply overwhelmed with water. And we have two more major storms set to come in starting tomorrow. So this is a very significant emergency. We have lost about 19 uh, people and uh, about 100,000 people are currently under an evacuation order. Uh, we are looking at flood alerts across the state, potential for more power outages, mudslides, uh, massive amount of uh, snow up in the mountains. Uh, so uh, we're bracing for more, and it's very difficult because when the ground is so saturated, any additional rain um, has a trigger effect of even uh, the potential for, for more and greater uh, flooding and, and mudslides and other emergencies. I think it's been referred to as, as whiplash weather, where you go from a drought to a deluge and you don't get sort of a, the calm uh, in between. Um, I, I do want to ask you about whether you think that this is going to be the new norm um, for California and, frankly, for, for the world, that we are going to be doing this sort of whiplash back and forth with deadly storms and then, you know, really problematic droughts, uh, extreme weather in general, if that's going to be the thing that we're going to all have to get used to. Yes, the answer is yes. And in California, we are very science-based in our approach to problem solving. We have known for a long time that extreme weather is coming, driven by a warming climate and climate change. And we have been investing in, in, in shoring up our levees and our infrastructure, in building out one, is one of the largest and most extensive emergency response systems anywhere in the world with helicopters and the kinds of boats that can come in uh, in the case of flooding, but at the same time, the kind of ability to mobilize for wildfires. So we have been preparing for some time. Uh, nevertheless, the magnitude of what we are up against in the coming days is very severe, and we are asking people in their homes to get ready, to get ready to evacuate if they have to, uh, to watch for rising uh, water, to look at their local news, uh, to have batteries for flashlights, and to get ready, uh, because these swings between drought and then the kind of atmospheric rivers that we're seeing, they are here to stay. And uh, and again, we are, we are wide-eyed, we are clear-eyed about what we are up against. But as prepared as we are, Mother Nature uh, has the capacity to wreak havoc, and we are uh, doing our best to get ready for it. Lieutenant Governor, I want to ask you about getting ready for it, because if this is the new norm, as you say, um, how, how are you, as, as one of the leaders of the state, making sure that California is prepared? And, and when I say that, what are some of the things on the table or that are being done to try and mitigate some of this for the citizens of this state? So for decades now, we have been putting state money and federal resources into building up flood control and improving our le levees, as well as doing things like um, improving the ability to store water so that when it rains, uh, whether it's in um, surface water storage uh, or, frankly, recharging our aquifers, we're doing the most to take advantage of the water that is coming into the state right now, um, while at the same time, uh, preventing loss of life and, and being uh, able to respond to emergencies. So all of this is happening at the same time, and we've been working on it for decades. Uh, so, so that's all great. But what we are also doing, and I think this is really important, it's something California is known for, that because we know that climate change is real, we are investing in a carbon-free energy future. So we have uh, about $48 billion over the last two years in the kind of tax credits that will allow the private sector to come up with the kind of innovations that we hope will change the ability of us on a global level to be able to combat climate change and, and deal uh, with or, or, or try to avoid further climate change 
in the future. Of course, that's a much bigger goal. Mm -hmm. um, but we are re responding to this from everything from responding to uh, extreme weather to trying to prevent um, more climate change in the future by transitioning to a carbon-free energy future. Cal this is California, we have the capacity to, uh, to have it all, to deal with it on both of these levels, and that's what we're trying to do. California is, is something like the fifth largest um, economy in the world. Um, and, and I want to ask you about that, because right now, California is facing a potential $22 billion plus budget deficit. Um, and, you know, I, we've been looking at the fact that Governor Newsom has proposed cutting $6 billion of the $54 billion that was set aside for a multi-year uh, spend on, on climate. Um, that's going to be cut down some because of this defi deficit, potentially. Um, why do that at a time when you know this is going to be the new norm and it really is needed? So last year we had a $100 billion budget surplus, and that is a big part of where that $56 billion came from in order to um, transition to a carbon-free energy future. Cutting it by $6 billion is a relatively small difference, and what it did was allow us to not have to tap into our rainy day fund. So our rainy day fund is higher than it's ever been. We feel very strongly uh, positioned to be able to uh, deal with this deficit, but also to an economic turndown uh, that's happening nationwide. So we still have enormous resources that are going into combating climate change in the future. And we encourage entrepreneurs to take advantage of these programs because they're mostly coming in the forms of tax credits and grants to leverage innovation for, uh, for new approaches to everything from battery storage and offshore wind uh, to developing uh, sun uh, and, and wind uh, uh, as alternatives to these, um, to non-renewable energy sources that dominate in the world today. Well, there is plenty of sun here most of the time, although the last couple of weeks have, have proven otherwise. Um, I do want to talk to you about some research um, that was published by the academic journal um, Science. Uh, ExxonMobil accurately forecasted that, you know, how climate change was going to cause this global temperatures to rise as long as the 1970s, according to this uh, research. And they predicted how burning fossil fuels would warm the planet and but they publicly denied the link. ExxonMobil has come out and said, look, this issue has come up several times in recent years, and in each case, our answer is the same. Those who talk about how Exxon knew were, are wrong in their conclusions. But this is the research being done by the academic journal Science. I'd like to know from you, do you think that big oil is responsible in part and should take part in the solutions? In other words, pay up. Yes, and thank you for bringing this to the awareness of CNN International because you have people watching around the world. But here in California, we have known that this is happening for a very long time. That is why our 2045 goals in California being carbon neutral, our 2035 goal, that starting in 2035, the only new cars that can be sold in California must be zero emission vehicles. The standards that we put in place in our state are way ahead of anywhere else in the country and, and almost anywhere in the world. And we are putting our money where our mouth is and in particular trying to leverage our dollars with the private sector, with innovation, with the next generation that considers a changing climate to be you know, their moonshot. Uh, so we're moving forward into the future, but at the same time, absolutely, oil companies have to be held accountable. You know, in California, we're also feeling a backlash from them because they've jacked up our, our gas prices here beyond what they are in other uh, parts of the country and then blame it on us uh, which was absolutely wrong and unfair. So the future is renewable energy sources. And I hope that all of your viewers, particularly young people and young people uh, who are ambitious and want to make a difference in the world, get on board and help uh, because this is really where we have to go.